right, here is just a quick demo on how to use maya's end cloth. i've already got a quick little rig set up here like a mast of a ship and some sails attached to it so what we're going to do is come over here to the end cloth tab if you don't have your tabs open you just enable them right there and just click this little plus sign with the t-shirt on it so end cloth is added to it but you see it doesn't look like much now because it doesn't really have any properties so what we'll do to start off with is you know left click go to your vertices select top and bottom of the mast actually we've got to go one at a time so select this and if you're in the end dynamics tab hold down spacebar press end constraint and point to surface constraint and just to give you an idea of what it does you see now it's attached to it so we just need to do that again to the bottom here same thing and you can see roughly that it does it so what we can do now is actually edit the, uh, the tension between the, uh, the cloth and the constraint object so just go up here turn off that filter come over here and instead of spring we could change it to weld so now it won't stretch so much when you know it gets pulled away you could also repeat that for down here And you'll see that when we're just dragging on the timeline that it's pretty rough. It's because it's a live simulation. If we actually turn this into a cache file right there, then it would be a lot more accurate. All right, so now we want to put some wind in this scene. Turn that back on. So to the right of the, uh, the end cloth node, we have the nucleus, which is the world settings for uh, how the cloth will behave. So we have things like gravity, air density, density, and what we want to turn up is wind speed. And it's going to be like a hurricane, so just turn it all the way up. And also, we'll turn up the air density a little bit so to give the uh, the effect a little more, a little bit more definition. So now we see wind is you know blowing. You could also give it a little bit of noise. You could also control the direction here if you wanted to get really technical with it. <coughs> Before I go any further, I actually want to select these three objects and click this. It's the passive collision object button. And it'll make it so the cloth shouldn't go through it. It should actually collide with it. So. It's a little bit too stretchy, so let's go back in here and go over to presets and pick something a little bit more heavy, like, uh, oh, I don't know, thick leather, even though cells aren't really made of thick leather. Let's just see how that reacts. Uh, not really what I'm looking for. Let's just try heavy denim. How about that? And whatever it is, we'll just roll with it so we don't run this too long. All right, so now we have a nice little simulation going on here. So let's make this a little more interesting and tear the cloth. <coughs> so we want to select vertices again, use your paint select tool, and let's just add some holes in here to start with. Here's the hard part, just press tear. Now, when the wind blows, it should tear apart. And just blow away. All right, I actually ended up deleting the other sail just so my computer has a little bit easier of a time keeping up. Um, so where were we? All right, so we have our, uh, our main tears going on here. So let's go ahead and add some secondary tear going on. Um, let's come back over here and uh, 
what I, what I already did was I shrunk down my brush size to about half of what it was before. So now what we'll do is I want to actually tear this thing clean in half. And also I want to put in some vertical tearing here just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. So now we'll go ahead and just click tear again. And I got the beach ball for a second there. And we'll go ahead and select that. So what I did right there was I came back over here. It turns that on automatically. I come back over here and I turn off geometry so I can select that actual tear. And over here you have a lot of properties going on. Um, the one that we're going to focus on right now is glue strength. So we're going to take this tear and turn it up to 1. So it's not going to tear at all if it's at 1. So what we'll do is go to about halfway through the animation and set a key there and go to the frame that I want it to tear on, which 103 will be fine. And I'll actually take this down to 0 to make sure that it will tear. It's thinking right now. So we'll take that all the way down to zero and set another key. So now, let's go ahead and, uh, and run this simulation. If you click on the sail and you press this right here, this will cache it out. So it'll go frame by frame so it'll actually play smoother. So now we wait. So the cache is done. And uh, now we can take a look at what we have going on here. So let's take a look. And right around frame 100 it should just bust right open. So you know that's that's a little bit abrupt. You could actually go in there and add some <clears throat> some more tear uh, properties in there to make it a little bit more procedural on how it rips apart, but that's it roughly. Let's play around a little bit and add smooth to this. Let's see what that does. Come on. That's just a quick walkthrough. I hope it made sense and that you guys could do your own little experiments and uh, don't let it keep you up too late at night.